the other day a radio interviewer told me that amusingly interestingly I thought that happiness is the new black this season and I really had to laugh and I thought yeah that's the problem people are the happiness fed right now it's only gonna be a season and it's gonna be a short season even if it's a long season it's just a year where it's a short season like the spring or the summer but what are we really looking for in the long term and what is this happiness fed or this great happiness wave all about of course happiness is good happiness is important but is that all is there not more to life than the pursuit of happiness and if we had a little wealth and a little pleasure onto it is that enough is that all that there is the Dalai Lama says that happiness is the purpose of life and to help others be happy and that's beautiful that's, that's the meaning of life that's beautiful as far as it goes but happiness we have to look at happiness as just the tip of the iceberg I think happiness goes all the way down from happiness to satisfaction fulfillment and even deeper contentment Buddha said contentment is the ultimate form of wealth. From happiness to contentment, satisfaction, fulfillment, and, and down even deeper to everlasting bliss, heavenly bliss, nirvana, deathless peace and ease. This is true happiness. This is what we seek. This is what all of us seek through all kinds of different means and MOs, tools and techniques. And this is the main subject, actually, of all the spiritual traditions. Whether we talk about big words, which we really don't understand very well, most of us, which are merely placeholders for an absolute and ultimate ideal like God, or truth, or universal love, or cosmic mind. God is the main placeholder in the West for these ultimate ideals, but there are others. In Buddhism, it's enlightenment. Mostly what we think about these things are not the things themselves anyway. But if we think of it as happiness and we start to pursue and think more deeply, which I truly hope for and advocate here, if we think more deeply about what we really want and need, what we're really looking for in life, what really brings us the everlasting, uh, dare I say, security, comfort, ease, the Buddhist enlightenment is called nirvana, defined as deathless ease. It's beyond this life. It's beyond death even. Deathless ease or everlasting peace. That is heavenly or divine, everlasting, nirvanic happiness. Not just a little pleasure, as my friends in Overeaters Anonymous have told me, a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips, a moment of pleasure, of taste gratification, happiness. I mean, how much happiness can you get from a box of chocolate? Yes, I know a lot, admittedly, but is it enough? And for how long? Or anything else that we really like. We have to go beyond, I think, this dichotomy of like and dislike and really embrace a deeper sense of connectedness, oneness, of contentment and satisfaction. And find out that satisfaction and contentment can be the way, not just the goal. We can actually live it and cultivate it in our own lives. So Buddha's teaching of his facts of life encoded in his famous and ancient, timeless Four Noble Truths is really about how we can find what we seek. Call it happiness, if you like, for now. Really everlasting, uh, deathless peace and ease. How can we find this? And what is it? Where is it? Is it outside ourselves? Is it in the next life after we die in some heavenly hunting ground? Where is it, if not here and now? Because if it's not now, I believe it's nowhere. If it's not here, where would it be? So this everlasting bliss and ease is something that we can experience for ourselves. In fact, millions have, through enlightenment, enlightened wisdom, through opening the heart, awakening the mind, nurturing the soul, through finding our true selves and our true authenticity. And for this, I think there's no better means than introspective awareness, meditation, and finding out who and what we truly are, what our place is in the world. This is the purpose of any spiritual tradition. This is how we come to 
deal with the great issues, the great dilemmas, the great mysteries of death, and if there is one, the afterlife, life and death, birth and death, birth and life with all its travails and exigencies, vicissitudes and pleasures and delights, because the unenlightened life, worldly life, ordinary life, mortal life is certainly difficult, challenging, full of loss, change, disappointment. Therefore, Buddha's first teaching is a diagnosis that the unenlightened life, ordinary life as we know it, confused, deluded, anxious, worrisome life, is full of dissatisfaction. This is the diagnosis. And the second part of this, the second truth, is the cause of that, which is ignorance, which is not knowing the reality, not knowing causation, how things work, not knowing who and what we are, not knowing the true nature of reality. This is the diagnosis about our problem. So that's the first noble truth is dissatisfaction, and the second one is its cause, ignorance, or ignorantly craving for what can't satisfy us in the long run. That's the root of all evil, ignorant craving, wanting what can't really help us in the long run. And then the third and fourth noble truths are the therapy or the, the cure for the diagnosis. The third, that there is another way, of, a way of, of deathless peace and ease. There is a nirvana. There is nirvana right here within samsara, within worldliness. There isn't light right here within the shadows, within the darkness. The shadows are nothing but light. That's the third noble truth. That there is another life that we find our authentic, true endless spiritual life here within our worldly life. That Buddha nature or divine nature is right here within human nature. Transcendent yet imminent in each of us. Timeless yet this moment, right now, the moment of nowness. The fourth time, the divine time, the timeless time, the holy now. Beyond the linear time of sequential time, past, present, and future, the three times past, present, and future, but the now that bisects it, that connects us to the absolute, the ascendant dimension. The now, it's always now, right now. And if we can sink ourselves more fully into this nowness, we can really imbibe its delectable essences and nourish our spirit and soul, awaken our heart and mind, and be all that we are, who we really are and can be. That's the Buddhist secret.